Greetings, colleagues. I wanted to welcome you to our class, Leading Team-Based Ministry. As we get started this semester, there's just a couple of things I want to overview with you and make you aware of. You can download the document I'm going to be reviewing in this video under the section of the online course syllabus, and that's where you can find your own downloadable copy of our syllabus for this semester. The syllabus will serve as a guide for what we desire to accomplish through the course in your theological education. Leading Team-Based Ministry is a fun title in that it deals with multiple areas of our ministry. One of those areas that we're going to deal with is the personnel of the church. Personnel of the church is anyone that's on the payroll. So if you have a paid pianist, if you have a church custodian, if you have a church secretary, if you have a pastor, other ministers on the church staff, then that would constitute all of the different personnel people on your staff. As the church grows larger, you may find yourselves with paid preschool workers. You may find yourself with multiple ministers on the staff, different directors, different aspects of um, administrative responsibility in the church. So you might have a church uh, cook or a, a whole staff in your food service. You may have many areas of personnel, but there's a major aspect of the church that also deals with the team in order for us to lead and accomplish ministry. And that is all the volunteers it takes week in and week out to do the ministries we feel God has called us to do. So as we unpack this course this semester, we're going to be looking for a few weeks as we get started with the ins and outs of human resources with paid staff. But then we're going to switch and focus the majority of our time on leading a team of volunteers to accomplish the ministry in the local church. And uh, so what I want to do now with you is I have my own printed copy of our syllabus for the semester. So there's a couple of things I want to make you aware of. One of those is on page two of the syllabus that's going to give you the student learning outcomes. And there's seven things we're trying to accomplish in this course as we um, begin. And so look, read those with me if you have a copy in front of you. We're going to demonstrate an understanding of the theological as well as the ecclesiastical foundation for our context of ministry in the local church and the implementations of this understanding with our leadership and team ministry. I think that in, it goes with all the functions of the church that we deal with. So we're going to have volunteers on committees. We're going to have volunteers on teams. We're going to have volunteers teaching Sunday school or Bible study small groups every week. We're also going to have volunteers that help us with uh, serve it by serving on different committees that have uh, financial, they have personnel, they have facility, um, uh, properties, uh, concerns with them, maybe the transportation. And then you also have many areas of church administration that begin with leading team-based ministry, but you also have all the staff things. So no matter what size church you have, you're going to be dealing with these aspects of ministry. So we want to be sure that we are grounded theologically and ecclesiastically with how the church is designed in Scripture. And so we just want to be sure that we're not uh, creating things that are not there. So we want to be sure our grounding, our foundation is in the Word and in our theology. We're going to look at some biblical principles, some different biblical qualifications for leadership in the church. Some of those deal with qualifications I would term as layperson qualifications. And some of those are going to deal with minister qualifications. It's pretty interesting in the New Testament when we start unpacking qualifications for leadership in the church. There's qualifications for deacon. There's qualifications for minister, qualifications for elder. There are many ways we look at qualifications for ministry, but there's also uh, qualifications, I believe, when we start looking at how we use our giftedness. Uh, all of us have gifts and talents that we're to bring to the table as we collectively do the ministry leadership of, of a church. And so we want to be sure that it, as we lead our team-based ministry that we're putting those people in their right places uh, that they feel led and are naturally gifted to be. I'm naturally gifted in administration and teaching, so it's fun for me to teach this class. It is right within my wheelhouse, or to be on church staff and, and weekly administering and, and doing teaching and evangelism. Those are right at the top of my giftedness and the different profiles that I've taken over the years. Also, though, we want to help you develop a church staffing plan. Now, don't think this is just a paid church staffing plan. When I talk about church staffing plan, I'm talking about what it takes for you to fill every spot needed to lead the ministry you feel called to in the local church. So if you find yourself as a children's minister, what would that church staffing plan look like for children's ministry for a given church year? What would it look like in youth ministry? What would it look like in your worship music ministry? What would it look like as a pastor? What would it look like as a church as a whole? It's pretty overwhelming sometimes when we start feeling how many people need to be on a committee, how many people need to be teaching a small group, how many people need to be serving in different areas, and we look around and go, wow, there are 
There are many positions that we fill, and so that's why I believe leading team-based ministry is important. But in the new day in which we live in our culture, the recruitment and the hiring principles, how, because when we ask a volunteer to do something in the legalese of church administration, we're actually hiring them. We're employing them to do a specific task, a specific job. So there are some legalities we're going to talk about and how they're different for someone who's a paid employee and someone who's not an employee, but actually employed to a specific task, ministry, or committee in the church. So there's a couple of things we will look at there and learn how to manage ourselves in areas of time management or emotions and interpersonal relationships uh, skills and understand various challenges of families of church staffs. And when I say that, I would uh, recommend that you, if you find challenges with family, that you look at one of the optional textbooks for this course, which is Choosing to Cheat by Andy Stanley. He talks about um, we're going to have to cheat something every week of our lives because it's, uh, it's hard to get everything in. So it's going to be important for you to look at, at that. And so you be sure that one area you don't cheat in your time management is your family. Also, we want you to gain a deeper understanding of interpersonal relationships and how to effectively connect and work with people under supervision and develop an appreciation for the compound issues to recruiting, overseeing, and working with staff and lay people and then gain exposure to and learn from some leaders who are currently active in the local church ministry. And then we end it with spiritual leadership, uh, with special leadership that are often sensitive and challenging. So we're talking about change, uh, communication, conflict, criticism, church discipline, some of those uncomfortable things that we deal with as we try to lead people to do what we feel needs to be done each and every week in the local church. You have one required textbook. I want to make you aware of uh, Teams That Thrive. This is by Warren Bird and Ryan Hartwick. I've um, interacted with Ryan Hartwig over the past couple of years, and I really like this book. Um, it's five disciplines of collaborative church leadership, and that's just going to work well, I believe, with our course. There's a couple of books. Um, I already referenced the Andy Stanley Choosing to Cheat, but there's also Jim Putman's Church is a Team Sport. So if you're trying to figure out how to get everybody on a team and everybody's just wanting to be a silo or on an island, that would be a good book for you to supplement our course. And uh, Pat McMillan is The Performance Factor, and that's a great book um, of just talking about uh, what happens when we actually all get on the same page and come together to really do the work. So there's uh, four units that this course has touched on. Uh, those units come down into several uh, lessons, several sessions. You're going to see 14 units in Blackboard, but just know that they're going to be grouped a little bit um, by subject matter. So the one is as we just start dealing with the church staff, and then we're going to move to designing both paid and volunteer, and then enlisting and orienting church and staff and lay volunteers, and then we end up with the staff functioning effectively. And we're just going to unpack those this semester. You're going to have an exam on the first unit um, in the first month of our class. That's going to be an interactive class for you to take teaching notes and other things from the course and be able to do that exam. Then there's a case study staff plan where you're going to work through how you would staff uh, a, a church. And then there's a personal code of ethics for a staff position. I think it's important as we ask people to serve in any specific capacity that we also help them understand the role. Uh, and, and, and so as we do that, I believe a personal code of ethics of what we expect in that role is important. So you get to do one of those. And then you're going to end the semester with an area of research. And that area of research is, um, I think it's just going to be great for you. And that is um, just figuring out one area, writing 10 to 15 pages, and, um, and utilize a minimum of 10 sources. It's a typical research paper. And then the values are there for you in the syllabus. So I hope this is a great class for you. I hope it's a great elective if it's an elective in your degree plan or if it's required in the degree plan that you are seeking. I hope that this course comes together to provide you information to move the pendulum forward in helping people uh, lead together as one team so we can accomplish much through the local church as God has called each of us to make an impact for him as he grants us days to do so. Be blessed, and I look forward to our class together.